everybody always recommends expertising Yi song a as your first legendary in rise of kingdoms but the truth is that he's one of the oldest commanders in the game so today we're going to take a look at whether or not he's still worth using in rise of kingdoms in 2023 what's going on guys cheers today we're going to take another closer look at one of the older commanders in rise of kingdoms Yi song Ye, because he just got an upgrade to his relic that you can see here in the museum these new upgraded relics really have provided a breath of fresh air for a lot of these older commanders that have sort of been on the fence of being replaced or have completely fallen out of favor and since so many people myself included talk so highly of Yi song Ye, I think it's really important that we take another closer look at this commander first if you're a new player we're going to take a look at all of his skills and see exactly what he's doing and we'll also talk about some of my favorite talent builds for Yi song Ye as well and then later in the video we're going to talk about the pros the cons the best commander pairs and who should be expertising this commander so make sure you stay tuned for that if you find this video useful drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel and consider subscribing we're really close to 50,000 subs and you don't want to miss the upcoming rise of kingdoms content okay so the active skill on Yi song Ye is the number one reason why people use this commander even in the late game now before you have him expertise it's a 1400 damage factor to five targets that's reduced reduced by 15% for each additional target. Even without the expertise, this is a really powerful active skill, especially in the early game, because you have to consider 1400 damage factor to five targets we can look at somebody like Cao Cao who is also around in the pre kvk or kvk1 he deals 1400 damage factor to only one target so the damage output on this active skill is absolutely insane if we take a look at his second skill normal attacks from this commander have a 10 percent chance to grant 100 extra rage and a hundred percent increased attack for archer units for the next three seconds this is a really nice second skill for two reasons one it provides a mega powerful archer buff obviously a hundred percent that's pretty much unheard of but the rage engine i think is really the star of the show here because the 100 raid that's just going to cause the active skills to pop off even faster and pretty much every commander that you're going to be pairing Yi song Ye with has the rejuvenate talent which means every time you use the skill you're going to gain even more rage and so this is sort of an endless cycle where more skills you use the more rage you get and therefore the more skills you use and remember this skill is the main reason you want to use him so the second skill getting you to those active skill pops even faster is absolutely huge especially in the early game where a lot of commanders don't have these rage restoration buffs and you also don't see a lot of the late game commanders such as nebu who reduce the rage of your enemy so a lot of times you'll have isong in the early game who just gains rage without anybody stopping him the third skill unfortunately is not nearly as good as the first two and in fact it's almost entirely entirely useless when this commander is leading the garrison of your city your garrison troops and watchtower gain 10 percent attack now the fact that this is universal attack is really good because when you're on your city wall and Yi song Ye is in your garrison this 10 percent of attack will apply to all of your archers your infantry your, your cavalry and even your siege units so really that's powerful but again it's only for your city and the watchtower is effectively useless in city rallies so it's nice but realistically as a early game player and even as a late game player you shouldn't really be taking city rallies and if you do I mean Isong is okay on the wall but it's still gonna really really hurt because there's no tankiness on this commander the fourth skill is unbelievable okay this is 50 percent bonus skill damage flat out there's no requirements or conditions that have to be met it's not for a specific troop type there's literally it's just straight up 50 percent bonus skill damage this is an unheard of amount of bonus skill damage that we have yet to see in any other commander in rise of kingdoms the only one that comes close is nevsky and that is a 60 percent bonus but 35 percent of which is only after he's already cast his active skill so the universal skill damage here is insane but the best part about isong Ye is his expertise okay and what this does is it bumps up that damage factor which was already really good to 1700 that's really solid five targets there is no other commander in the game that has a five target aoe as high as this so even though he's an old commander he still is the highest aoe damage commander in the game and the best part is the circular shape okay the circular shape of Yi song Ye's expertise means that the active skill actually hits everything in that circle that you just saw on the screen there and as you can see here the skill cycle is pretty fast for Yi song Ye, but being able to hit targets in a circle means that you don't have to be facing the direction of the enemy if there's just an enemy hitting you from behind for example and you're focusing on another target this skill is still going to hit them behind 
behind you which is the best case scenario for aoe skills in rise of kingdoms now as far as talent builds go there's two different ways that you can build e song a okay the first way is that you can just go all the way to feral nature and just max out the skill tree and this is going to cause you again to have the fastest rage cycle possible i think that this is again i've mentioned this before in previous videos but feral nature is really good for those really short fights where you want that 10 percent chance to just get that skill shot off a little bit faster and that's pretty much it also the secondary is going to deal more skill damage with clarity which is nice you can ignore elite and power there's no point in this for e song Ye. and then you come all the way to the top here get venomous sting i think the active skill damage for both is huge here razor sharp is going to give you even more rage for each normal attack which is massive you also want to get rapid fire here for the more normal attack damage you then can grab the arrows knocked which i don't love but you have extra talents left over so you might as well this helps you if you drop below 50 percent which typically you shouldn't do but it does happen relatively quickly with isong a primary anyway and then you get a little bit of extra attack over here as well the other build which i think is actually a little bit better is this one here where you go all in on the entire archer tree and you still grab rejuvenate from the skill tree for the bonus rage restoration you still get tactical mastery for the skill damage and heraldic shield for reducing the skill damage that you take you have two points left over so i put it here in the one percent of health but of course you could put one here and one here for naked rage or you can go all in on naked rage and remove points from something like full quiver if you really wanted to naked rage is a, a min maxing thing here where you know if you're not getting hit this is a huge plus if you are getting hit it's a huge downside so i usually avoid naked rage in general but if you're a high risk high reward player then you could go ahead and grab that instead of something like full quiver the reason that i prefer this build here is that i feel like it's a little bit more uh, sustainable and a little bit more predictable whistling arrows here has a 10 percent chance for 25 percent damage for two seconds that's absolutely huge for a commander that's already dealing a massive amount of damage himself venomous sting obviously is a must as well as razor sharp but you're also grabbing phoenix tail arrows which is a 10 percent chance for damage over time this is a pretty nice damage factor for the fact that you're only spending talent points to get this i mean this almost feels like a mini skill on this commander so that's really cool now it's worth noting however that e song a should pretty much never be used as a primary commander in rise of kingdoms okay it's only acceptable if you have no other legendary archer commanders to use in that primary slot so for example if you have are choosing between e song a or an epic commander as primary I would choose Yi Song Ye for the PvP scenarios because the only thing that's targeted more in the open field than an Yi Song Ye is a purple commander okay a commander being purple in the open field is just a big sign on your back that says melt me so you definitely don't want to do something like kusunoki primary isong a secondary you would much rather do isong a primary with kusunoki secondary you want to hide that epic commander behind him so that way players don't think that you're a free to play weak player or whatever that they can get free kills from even if it might be true you don't want them to know that okay now let's talk about the pros of investing in isong a and taking him all the way to expertise okay the first thing is that he is i believe the second wheel of fortune commander that you get access to in rise of kingdoms which means he is one of the first legendaries that you can possibly get on your account and is definitely the first legendary that's worth spinning the wheel of fortune for a ton okay the value from this commander is absolutely insane you can use this commander in every single kvk for the rest of the time that you play rise of kingdoms that's season one of kvk all the way through season of conquest late game you're still gonna find a use for Yi Song Ye. Now, there may be some slightly better open field marches later down the line, but the fact that you get so much value out of this commander from the very beginning is huge. The only time that you should ever really bench Yi Song Ye is if you have a really compelling five army lineup that replaces them with someone that's dealing just as much damage, okay? Because if you bench Yi Song Ye too early, I mean, really, you're just leaving damage on the table, okay? There's just, it's universal raw AOE damage by having him out there and it's it's so so good it cannot be emphasized enough the second thing that's really useful about isong ye and this circular aoe is that the circular aoe applies to barbarians as well so if you're in the open field and you're fighting barbarians for example i would show you but i have all my gatherers out i could be attacking this level 25 barbarian and isong ye's circular aoe will trigger and hit this level 20 barbarian assuming that they're actually close together as you can see they're walking farther apart now they heard me say it but if isong ye's aoe hits this barbarian that means it's not going to cost you action points to hit that barbarian so 
typically if you're a free to play player or a low spender or just very active in the game you're going to be spending down these action points as much as possible because when you defeat barbarians you get stuff for free okay you get resources speed ups you get the arrows of resistance which you need to get to city hall 25 you also get some gems here for free so one of the cool things is that you can get these resources essentially for free by using a commander that has circular aoe and really isong a is by far the best choice for doing this because you get him so early in rise of kingdom so even in the late game even in season of conquest let's say if you don't have a great pair for him in the open field and you can't use him for pvp well great news you're still gonna get a ton of value out of isong Ye by doing what's called chaining barbarians and that is hitting one barb and getting the second barb kill for free that's basically double the rewards for only spending action points on a single barbarian and this is one of the things that is pretty much unique to Isong Ye. obviously there's a couple of other commanders that have circular aoe in the game heraclius is uh one of the newest commanders that actually has this but this again is a season of conquest commander okay and Isong Ye comes around so early that you can start to chain barbarians with him right out of the gate so if you're an active player spending down your action points Isong Ye is going to provide you with more value than pretty much any other commander in rise of kingdoms especially if you throw him behind a tanky commander like richard even at 5111 or 5511 Richard is a cheap investment that's extremely tanky and that means he's just going to keep your Isong Ye alive and get those free barbarian kills another pro of having Isong Ye in the early game and even in the late game is like I mentioned before you can actually slap him on your city wall as your garrison typically as a secondary commander and you're gonna have a really solid garrison I mean you can build him with a garrison tree I, I don't think he's great for the primary but you could do that beyond that you could do maybe a Charles Martel primary with Isong Ye secondary and you're just going to deal a ton of damage to that target okay again he's giving 10 percent attack to all of your troop types it's not nothing okay it's nice he's again not that tanky but he's definitely one of your best choices for an early game city garrison if you do find yourself getting hit while you're offline which I hope doesn't happen but it's also at least worth noting here in the video and the final thing that I want to talk about in the pro section is his relic okay his relic is absolutely incredible there's the one star version and the two star version okay the first star just by unlocking this relic gives you 10 percent defense and three percent skill damage okay we already talked about how his skill damage is through the roof and now he's getting more and remember he only has a 10 percent chance of getting archer attack but besides that he has no stats for archers which make him the definition of a glass cannon he deals massive aoe damage but he cannot take any damage in return so the fact that he's getting defense here for archers is really really good okay this is absolutely what he needed archer health maybe you could argue would be even better here but 20 percent on the second star and five percent skill damage i mean this is a slam dunk one of the best relics in the game for one of the best early game commanders in the game hands down this is a game changer for Yi song Ye in season of conquest this revitalizes his usage anybody that was considering replacing him for somebody like nebu or for artemnesia for example i mean this is just it's such a good relic on a commander that's already so good this really keeps him relevant in the season of conquest if it weren't for this relic it would be debatable whether or not you would want to keep Yi song Ye. but the 20 percent defense is absolutely something that he needs again we can look at a commander like nebu who comes around in the season of conquest he has a five target aoe but it's a fan shape and only 1500 okay so the active skill on isong Ye is just straight up better than nebu also isong Ye, remember has a 50 percent skill damage bonus with the relic it's 55 and yes nebu does have some march speed compared to isong Ye and 30 percent defense but remember isong Ye has now 20 percent defense he almost has as, uh, as much defense as nebu he's almost as tanky now he will be a little bit slower unfortunately which is probably one of the biggest downsides but just the fact that he is a season one commander that is at least on par or close to uh nebu in those ways and in some ways even better in the open field probably a little bit worse for things like rallies so good okay so good absolutely incredible now the cons for isong Ye, and we've touched on a couple of these all right the first is that you really do want to expertise him so it is extremely expensive to get uh to get the maximum value out of isong Ye, and it can be a little bit disheartening in the early game you know spending 690 your first 
690 legendary commander sculptures all in one place just to have one commander expertise it's very expensive it does take a very long time so that is definitely a downside additionally you can't really use him has as a primary commander at least not in season two season season three and of course season of conquest if he's an active uh, primary commander players are going to see him and they're going to swarm him down immediately it's just there's no shot he's a glass cannon and again he is lacking the march speed that you would want to get away from those unfavorable matchups so if you are using him in the open field it's hard for him to run away from the things that you don't really want him to be involved with so that is definitely uh the case you know getting your isong a swarmed can fill your hospital pretty quickly so you have to be very careful when you're using him in the open field but besides that i mean there's way more pros than cons for isong Ye, and i think you can sort of guess as to whether or not i think you should be investing in him and who should be investing in him okay the answer is i think everybody should be investing in isong Ye, whether you're a free-to-play player or a whale you should probably expertise this commander i think it is one of the commanders that you will regret the least especially because you can get him so early and you can get value out of him for so long you can start to use him at five five one one but really five five one five would be even better but again expertise is the way to go okay now let's talk about some of the best commander pairs for isong Ye here in rise of kingdoms if we're talking about the early game you just started playing the game and you're going up to kbk1 there's a few obvious choices here but mose here is probably Probably your best early game option because he also has a nice three target aoe here with a little bit of a debuff he's giving you a lot of stats that isong a does not have he's slightly tanky with the reduced counter attack damage and the instant proc damage that he has here as well more normal attack damage on the expertise if you do have that you're probably a whale but in the early game the most with isong a is is huge it's just it's so so good i can't emphasize this enough this is definitely one of the best if not the best early game archer pairings now of course you do have El Cid as well which I think is not as good as Thutmose he has only a single target damage with another instant proc damage here he has a little bit of defense and March speed which you definitely do want on Isong in the early game and a little bit of March speed and bonus damage under 50 percent so if you are finding yourself in those scenarios where you are getting melted a lot El Cid is uh, probably going to perform better than Thutmose in those ways but at the end of the day Thutmose is definitely the better choice for the early game now if you're a free to play player and you only have access to epic commanders in the early game then you really only have two choices that is Herman and Kusunoki unfortunately it's takes a long time to expertise Kiera and Imanip is technically an archer but he's really a secondary supportive commander and of these two I think that it depends on what you're looking for if you're looking for raw damage I would say go for Kusunoki he not only removes all the debuffs on your Isang Ye which is huge but he also has a three target fan shaped AoE which over the course of its entire duration is going to be dealing 800 damage factor to those targets which I think is pretty good could be better but for an epic commander it is what it is you're also getting 30 percent of stats here which you definitely want for your Isang a attack and defense and more damage over time on the fourth skill if you're looking to just debuff a single target then Herman's probably the way to go he has I think the highest single target damage factor of any epic commander which is cool and the rage and silence reduction is very unique in the early game I'm gonna be honest I actually forgot that he reduced rage that's actually really good the silence is huge you're getting less uh stats here than you would for Kusunoki but you also gain some March speed and here you have a normal attack damage bonus with a chance to gain even more rage so between Herman and Isong Ye, you're going to gain a ton of extra rage, honestly, on these skills, which is pretty good. It's also worth noting that when you get into season two of KBK and you get access to Alexander the Great, it's pretty common to use Alexander the Great primary with Isong Ye secondary. Now, I know you might be thinking that Alexander the Great is an infantry commander, and that's the great thing about Isong Ye is that nobody really cares that he's an archer commander, right? He's mainly just here for the raw circular AoE damage. He still gains the rage restoration here, and sure, you're missing out on the archer attack by pairing him with somebody like Alexander the Great but Alexander the Great is just so absolutely insane as a primary commander in season two that he's basically just an infantry vehicle for your massive circular AoE a lot of players use the Alex with Isong A in their season two of KBK and I still think that this is an exceptionally good March for that KVK if you're going to be doing any sort of PVP. Other honorable mentions for season one and two of KVK include Saladin primary as just Hanky Cavalry March, basically the same reason that you would use Alex, although I do think Alex is probably a little bit better. And you also could technically do Mehmed secondary. So you would do Isong A primary, Mehmed secondary. And again, this is just, I mean, 20% more skill damage, 20% more attack. This is uh, the definition again of glass cannon March 
but the AOE output is insane. Now, moving on to Season of Conquest and the late game, I think the slam dunk best choice is Boudicca Prime primary with Yi Song Ye secondary. The reason for this is that Boudicca's active skill here is going to cause the target to take 35% increased skill damage for three seconds, which is not only super important for being supportive in the open field, but it also slows them down by 30%. So you're almost guaranteed to get a really solid skill shot off from your secondary, which is Yi Song Ye. And we know that's super powerful. Also, the 50% skill damage bonus here is insane for the 2300 damage factor here on Boudicca, which we love to see. The archer attack in March speed here is crucial, plus under 80%, which you'll get to pretty quickly. You're going to gain 30% defense, which you desperately need. Also, the 20% defense on the relic from Yi Song Ye is really going to help out Boudicca as well. You also take 25% less skill damage with this, which again, Yi Song Ye is a glass cannon. So having any sort of tankiness or reducing the damage you take is huge. And on the fourth skill, you're going to have a little bit of healing as well. So it might be able to keep you around a little bit longer in the open field another really common choice is nebu okay you could do a 5515 nebu and have a pretty cheap budget build although you do have to be relatively lucky with getting uh you know all the points in that last skill instead of the third one the third skill is only for rallies and obviously if you're open field fighting you don't need this at all but it should go without saying that the synergy here is obvious and very good because again another five target damage factor i mean that is just if you're hitting all five targets with both these commanders the damage output is through the roof 50 percent or 55 percent with the relic bonus skill damage on this is wild plus you're gonna have a combined total of 50 percent archer defense 15% March speed is solid and the, there's a 15% damage bonus here on Nebu's fourth skill with the rage debuff for the target very very good stuff here this is only a three second cooldown by the way which is one of the lowest cooldowns for a debuff in all of the game that being said you also could do a 5551 Boudicca to do another budget build if you don't want to budget build Nebu you still can budget build Boudicca both of which uh, that's a nice advantage although I will say that the fact that with Boudicca's expertise there's an 80% chance to remove the silence that you could be getting from nearby Guan Yu's is huge you definitely don't want to silence Yi Song Ye you want his active skills to go off as much as possible and 10% archer damage I mean straight up that's I don't believe that that applies to skill damage but it does apply to everything else which hey it's nice and finally I do want to talk about Henry I actually think that Henry is a very niche commander a lot of players don't have him because they think that he's just for rallies but I think in the open field he's really good and you don't really want to hit Henry okay if you see a Nebu or you see a Boudicca like yeah there's a little bit of defense on these commanders and you know there's this, a little bit you know Boudicca's taking less skill damage there's a little bit of tankiness there but Henry really punishes you for hitting him now that's even more so the case with rallies but if you take a look here his active skill same nuke size as Boudicca but he takes 30 percent less skill damage for five seconds that's a really powerful buff to the army especially because again we have a glass cannon behind him in the form of YSG he gives 20 percent defense and 20 percent attack this is less defense than Boudicca but it happens right away okay Boudicca you have to wait till she's under 80 here it's all the time 20 percent March speed if you're outside your territory which is huge and you have 10 percent Archer damage and a 10 percent chance that if someone's hitting you you deal 800 damage factor to your target now it's a five second cooldown but again the more targets that are hitting you the more the probability that you're going to be punishing the target that you yourself are hitting also the expertise if you do get it says when a troops rage reaches 70 percent they deal 30 percent more normal attack damage otherwise they take 20 percent less normal attack damage so here a majority of the time this will be more tanky for your army but it's also a nice little damage buff as well at the end of the day i think free to play players low spenders really should just go for Boudicca ysg but there's a ton of other pairs like nebu that you could do as well with that being said Yi song a for me is absolutely a commander that is still worth investing in in 2023 and great news if you invested in him two years ago or three years ago you're still gonna get a ton of good value out of ysg for the coming months and I think it's thanks to this 20 percent extra defense which I think is huge now the other thing too is the devs have confirmed that they do plan to expand the museum over time so it's possible that we could get a third star for this in a year or a year and a half and you know what are we going to look at then 30 percent archer defense and 
seven percent skill damage i mean that would be absolutely huge so i still think moving forward if this keeps getting buffed i think we're still gonna see ysg used in the game unless we see another ridiculously powerful archer commander in season of conquest but ysg will always have the benefit of being around way sooner than those commanders and you can invest in him right away for all kvks that you'll ever find yourself in with that being said guys i would love to hear your thoughts and comments on ysg down in the comment section below do you regret investing in him or not or do you still think he's one of the best commanders in the game while you're down there make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm and tells YouTube that you want to see more content like this consider subscribing we're so close to 50,000 subscribers and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace